Alright, I'm going to show you how to make this cute reindeer. So for this project you'll need some poly stuffing, some beige felting wool, some dark brown felting wool, red and black. So I'm using a foam here, a car foam, and uh, about this much poly stuffing for the head. We're going to make the head by rolling it into a cylinder as tightly as you can. This gives you an idea of how big it's going to be. I'm using a fine needle and we're looking to create an egg shape by stabbing a long cylinder as I'm doing here and uh, keep turning it round, keep it nice and tight with your hand. I've speeded up the video here just to show you that what I'm doing but just up and down and then tuck the ends in to make it more oval shaped rather than sausage shaped but just point the needle in the direction that you want to make smaller really so you are stabbing around the top and the bottom of the head tucking in any stray bits and lumps and bumps aim for those but try and stab evenly all around and keep keep it moving keep the angle that you're stabbing at changing just so that you're evenly felting the whole piece and it will be equally otherwise it will be equally solid i have skip forward there i must have been doing that for about five to ten minutes um, next take some beige wool and work out to work out how much you need wrap it round the piece you've just made just to, you're just going to cover it so that no other white shows so to take that wool then you can work out how much you need there spread it out a little bit because you don't need it that thick um, so that it's equal and you're going to cover the white with this this is going to form the head and as you can see I've just going to attach it at the start uh, needling it to the white base, the centre, and then needle felt all the way around. Keep rolling it up in the beige felt, uh, felting wool, and uh, keep turning and stabbing as you go. This is just to get it attached for now. Don't worry about, you can see indentations, the more you felt it, the less you'll see that. Um, tuck the ends in so that you're making sure you're covering the top of the head and the bottom of the head. Um, tuck it all in. You don't want any white showing from underneath, which you won't do. If you find you see a little bit of white, you can just get a little bit more beige felt or beige wool and um, add it over the top. But uh, this should be a sufficient. You can see it's covering it nicely. I'm just working my way around and tucking the last bit, felting the last bit down. So here you can see it's still lumpy and bumpy but then I skip forward and it's a nice shape and smoother. That's just from needle felting it for a good 5-10 minutes. Take some more beige felt and roll it up because we're going to make the muzzle or the nose area. So if you roll it up tightly you can get an idea of how big it's going to be. Remember it'll be smaller than this once you've felted it. So that looks about right, so I'm going to just keep it rolled up and start stabbing it. And you're looking to create a, a triangular, slightly triangular oval shape to form the mu muzzle here. But it's mostly oval really. Just keep stabbing. Don't worry if it looks a bit of an odd shape. If you keep stabbing at the area that's a bit lumpy, it'll come smooth. Um, it's amazing how forgiving needle felting is. Once you're happy with it, attach it just below the middle of the head. Uh, so you want it fairly loose so that when you attach it, you can it's not too tight to attach to the head. So as you can see, I'm just stabbing it around the join to make it stick to the head. And I've not used anything else other than needle felting to make it attach to the head. Some people hide the join. You can do if you want by putting a bit more all round but I've left it because I think it looks fine for this particular project. Now I'm rolling up another piece of red felt to create the nose for the for Rudolph because he's famously got a red nose. So uh, rolled it up making it into a, a ball 
and you're just making a small ball just pulling in the edges and turn it over and do the same again because you have it fuzzy on the other side i have left this quite fuzzy as you'll see and um, it's just so that when i attach it i can finish it off and make it all nice and smooth once i've attached it to the muzzle so i'll get it in the right place and then just stab stab away all over the nose make sure you're keeping it in the right place as you're doing this uh, attach it round the edges but you can stab right through the front of it as well so it skips ahead here the nose is all nice and smooth now and just finishing it off and now we can move on to uh, the next stage which is creating the ears so we'll get two pieces of felt roughly the same size roll them up so again so that you can see that they're about the same size and the right size for their ears uh, when making the shape like an ear, it's best to keep the shape that you're trying to make in your mind's eye. So try to imagine what you want the shape to finish like. So it's sort of a almost triangular, oval shape. So you can see I'm holding it at one end. That's the end that's going to attach to the ear like that. And I'm needle felting the rest, just getting any lumps and bumps out in there, just making it quite firm so that... Um, it keeps its shape, leaving the end fluffy and unfelted so you can attach it to the head. Now I'm rolling up some dark wool. This is going to just, I'm just going to put this in the centre. Rubbing it between my hands helps get the right shape there. You see I've got a lovely triangular shape there. So I'm just attaching it to the inside of the ear. Layer it on. It's quite easy to attach different colours. Um, just needle felt it so it's all smooth and there's no bits sticking out. Lovely. Happy with that one. And then all we need to do now is um, attach it to the side of the head with the fuzzy part we left unfelted. And you make sure you're leaving room for the antlers at the top that we're going to add later. So I'm just attaching it now by felting that at the back and to the head. If you want to add more felt to attach it, you can wrap some round. But I found that it attached quite well, just with what I'd left. And attached it by needle felting around the bottom there, making it all smooth and lovely. Okay, so I made another one, attached that as well. Exactly the same way, just made second ear. Now we're going to get two pieces of dark wool, brown wool, uh, approximately the same size I folded it in half to make the main antler this is so I folded it in half and I'm folding the end over again it's over itself about two centimeters and needle felt in the end all the way around I just want to make a quite a bulky sort of end bit this is going to be like the main stem of the antler so keep turning and felting so that you've got a kind of tube shape I guess thick tube shape keep turning as you can see I've speeded it up so that um, you can see the process now I'm going to shape it slightly so that it turns up into a antler shape at the end so I'm needle felting across my nail there if you can see a sort of in a line to get the tip to turn up and then on the edge of the cushion I've got it leaning over to, to, to needle felt the back so this is to try and get that can you see it's like a corner shaped an angle a right angle almost not quite really um, but again keep the, the shape that you want it to be in your mind and I find that helps an awful lot if it helps to draw the shape first you could try that um, and then keep referring to it or have a picture of the finished product in front of you. Um, we're going to now make two small branches that come off this main trunk. So roll up a small piece of brown wool and attach it a short way along. And uh, as you can see, I'm just sticking it on there and having a look, see whether it looks right, see what you think. Is it big enough? I'm going to make another one. And so it's going to be two little spurs coming off the antler. I'm going to needle felt it a little bit first, just to make it a shape of a, a spur, a little sausage shape. 
and leaving one end fluffy again I like this technique of leaving one end fluffy just to attach it it seems to work for me um, there you go I've got like three little spurs now because the end turned up with the other two that I've just attached it looks like a, a little chunky antler Okay, so I've made another one now and I'm going to attach them both. I'll show you how to do that. As you can see, I've got quite a long length, so I've cut some of that fuzz off so that it can be attached uh, better because this is a dark brown fur that I'm needle felting into a light beige, so I don't want any of that to show at the back. So I've trimmed a bit more off there because I've still left too much. I want all those ends to be hidden inside so I'm attaching it by needling it straight down into the head and uh, very close to where the antler is placed again same with the other one trim the excess off right so I've attached the other ear in exactly the same way and now we're moving on to the eyes so take some small piece of black and roll it up to try and figure out how small how big the eyes are going to be and you can rub it between your hands to try and make a ball to give you an idea and um, that looks about right so I'm gonna needle felt this into a small ball now just gathering all the edges all the bits of stray strands and needle it into the middle to make a small dot and turn it over just to get the bits on the back just there you go it's still quite fuzzy Right, so I've got it in place now and I'm going to needle felt it onto the head just gently. Now I'm showing you this in real time to see how slowly and carefully I'm doing this because the eyes are really important and you want to take your time with them and just really do it slowly. You don't actually need to needle felt it that much. I've speeded it up now because I'm repeating it with the same process with the other eye. Make a little ball and then attach it. But you don't have to needle felt the eye a lot, otherwise you'll have an indented eye and you don't really want that. Okay, so that's the main black part. Now I'm taking a very small piece of polystuffing that's bright white. Uh, you can use white felt or wool if you've got white felt, but I just found this was a nice bright colour, a bright white and uh, works really well. I'm getting a very tiny amount there. I'm just trying to make a tiny ball. There you go. And this is going to create the highlight in the top left hand corner of the eye. I'm just needle felting it slowly again. But actually what I've done there is I've done it once too many and it's disappeared. So you need to be careful. And I'm gonna, just going to get a bit more again. Another lot. Same amount and roll it into a ball and try again you can just you can add more it it's fine there you go so i'm only doing one two maybe three goes to attach it and then once you're happy stop and then i'm going to do the other eye the same in the same place in the top left hand corner of the previous eye again adding a little bit more once you're happy with the amount showing, then stop. Don't mess. Don't be tempted to mess. <laughs> okay, so now then we're going to go move on to the mouth now. This is uh, going to go, have a think about where it's going to go. So I'm thinking it's starting there. And so you can attach the end. You can you see I've got a small piece of black. I'm attaching the end where I want. Now I'm twisting the wool round in my fingers so that it twists together to make a thin line and as I move along I'm needle felting that line where I want it to go so it's like as though you were stitching it but you're stitching it with your needle so you can guide it up or down you can make it into a smile I'm trying to make a, a sideways smile so it's not like dead central snip off the end and tidy up the ends into the mouth so that it's neat and tidy. Now I wanted to add it a bit further up the right hand side there so I just added a little bit more, snip it off and tidy up any loose bits and it's pretty much done. There you go, I'm happy with that. 
Now I'm looking at him and thinking his head's a bit too oval. I'd rather have it a bit more round. So I'm needle felting the very bottom of the head to make it shorter. As you can see I've skipped ahead here because um, I'm doing it for a good five minutes and eventually it looks a lot more round rather than oval which is a, um, a lot better shape. So I'm a, a lot happier with that now. It's the right shape, his eyes look good and everything. So I'm going to start on the body. So I'm using quite a lot of polyester stuff in here for the body. Um, if you're not sure if you've got enough, try and tightly bind it up to see how big it's going to be. Remember, it'll be even smaller than that. We want sort of an oval shape that's slightly narrower at the top. So I'm going to roll it up tightly and start needle felting up and down and turning as you go in the same way we did the head. Just keep tucking ends in at the bottom and watch your fingers because it as you know, probably it's painful if you get your fingers. <laughs> um, so keep tucking in the top bits and turning it round. So as you can see, I've start, I've really speeded it up here and uh, so that you can see the process. And I'm really needle felting the bottom there to try and make it flat as possible because it's going to sit uh, nicely with, if you do that. Also, take note of the shape. It tapers up where the head will attach so it's arms and we've got the top there and the legs will come from the bottom so you kind of it's a kind of a triangular shape so I'm continuing to needle felt just to make it that bit more solid there you go so it'll work like that his head will go on the top looking good looks check that it looks to the right proportion in, with his head and now we're going to coat it in a layer of beige felt like we did with the head so I'm working out how much I need there by wrapping it round pull it apart and then you're ready get a nice even thickness try and even it out and then we're ready to felt it round the body same process as when we did the head so just keep felting along and rotating it round tucking the top over so that you're covering the top with the beige felt as well you don't want any white showing just keep needle felting this is quite a lot of uh, work so if you'd rather you can make the body and head out completely out of the beige felting wool um, I just do this because I think um, it's easy to felt polyester stuffing and you get a nice compact body with it but this um, can work just as well by felting the whole thing out of felting wool. So as you can see, I've continued round and shaped it the way I want it and continue felting until you've got a nice smooth finish. Make sure it goes in slightly there where I indicated for the arms to attach uh, near the top. So it sort of slopes in at the top. Just needle felting round, continually moving though, don't stay in the same place. So that's the shape you're aiming for. We need to attach the head. So I'm going to needle felt the top down slightly because at the minute it's a bit of a point to attach it to. And I want the head to sit in slightly. So I'm going to needle felt the top to make a slight recess for it to sit down into. Uh, so I'm going to go over and over this one area, which as you'll see, it starts indenting it. This is where you can adapt and change the shape of your model once you've even created it. You know, it, it's this is why I say it's quite forgiving because you can change. You want to check that the head sits on straight. And uh, as you can see, I'm sort of needle felting over to one side now because it looks a bit lopsided. Yeah, that's, that's looking a bit better. I'm just deciding which is going to be the front of the body. Um, so once you've decided where the arms are going to go, I'm going to just going to needle felt a little bit more of an indent there so that they don't stick out unnaturally. Now we're going to give him a white belly. So I've got some white felt and I'm going to put it down the front to give him like a white oval on his front belly. I'm layering up some white there and just get it roughly in place. Follow the top bit down so that you can have a nice neat edge at the top there 
and I'm just going to slowly needle felt round the outline to make sure I know where I'm felting it doesn't get outside this oval area and then gradually work my way down the belly holding the felt as you go keeping it in, trained into that oval shape and just needle felting hold down the side and down the middle to the very bottom now I've got a bit sticking out at the bottom there I'm just tidying up the edges and then I'm going to chop that piece off I think yeah and then I'll just neaten up those edges it's really easy to do that's it neaten up the bottom now as you can see it still looks like some of the beige is coming through the bottom so I'm just going to layer some more white onto there so I'm just pulling long strands of white together and layering them on top of each other to give a good thickness of uh, felt for the belly so I'm just going to do the same work that onto the same area that I've done before so I've got guidelines to go by so I'll whiz through this fairly quickly um, just make sure you felt all over yeah I've whizzed ahead now as you can see it's looking a bit better it's looking a bit whiter for his belly okay. so he's looking quite good now and we're uh, gonna see if he sits flat on the floor you want to make sure the bottom's flat but also you need to re make a recess where the legs are going to go like we did with the arms so i'm just working away at the two positions where the legs are going to attach to the body just to make a slight indent not not massive indent but just a little bit and then we're going to make the legs now so to get an idea of size you can roll up the felt and uh, roll up two that are similar you need to try and get them equal as possible to try and estimate the size so that's about right i think that's about the same as the other one so i'm gonna take that felt there okay so we've got it rolled up uh, nice and tightly and we're going to start felting and we're going to start leaving a bit at the end for the foot unfelted for now and we're just going to work on the trunk of the leg so just work up and down from the ankle there up to the top where my left hand is holding the felt and rotate the leg round just working your way up and down felting a nice cylinder for the leg i've skipped ahead now so you can see i've felted it quite a bit and it's still got a loose bit at one end where you're going to attach it to the body but and a loose bit for the hoof which we'll deal with in a minute but for now we're just keeping felting the leg to want it nice and firm as you can see i'm completely left the foot for now because i'm now going to start working on the heel so i'm just going to make it flat at the end for the bottom of the foot and try to shape it into sort of a small little foot don't want a massive thing because it's on your hoof so just have again have the shape in your mind of what you want so just finishing off now just making sure the shapes how i want it um we're going to coat this end hoof with a dark brown felt so i've just got a small piece of dark brown and uh, sorry about that off picture camera work there but I'm just wrapping it, the felt round it just to make sure I've got enough but I'm just going to attach it in one place there at the end and then gradually working my way around I'm going to attach the brown felt over the top of the hoof just to make sure it's all covered nicely so you've got a nice little brown foot um, as you can see I'm speeded up now but it's uh, just wrapping it around making sure all the patches are filled in not left any showing there you go made two legs the same way and now i'm looking about the position of attaching them make sure you've got them in the position you want and then underneath you're just gonna felt the loose end of the leg to the body make sure you've got the leg in the right position and then really felt it properly onto the body make sure it's securely attached now you can see i've left quite a bit 
of spare wool and as I was doing this I realised the end bit rather than cutting it off I thought oh it looks a bit like a tail so I thought right well I'll just leave that as a tail because deers do have little fluffy tails like that don't they so um, I left it and uh, quite happy with that really the way that worked out sometimes the felt tells you how to work with it it's quite I like it when that happens so I'm um, just felting the other spare bits down making sure it's all well attached to the body and um, just tidying up that little tail a little bit um, I'll add something to it in a minute but uh, for now I'm just concentrating on the leg and it seems to be sticking down a bit so that um, it's not sitting flat so I'm just going to needle felt it can you see I'm needle felting it right into the body a bit more going right through the leg into the body and it just makes it sit flat and it's going to look good I think you can get an idea of what the finished product's going to look like there just a little bit more felting and right so now I've got a little bit of white felt because I'm just going to add to that tail and made a little bit of a triangle by taking a tuft and folding it in half so now I'm going to attach that to the bottom of the tail that was already there and make it more triangular shaped like a more little little triangle but I don't want to felt it too much because it's quite a fluffy tail and uh, I like the felted the unfelted rather aspect of it I'm just making sure it's attached to the bottom there there you go quite happy with that like I say not too felted because it's we want it fluffy now we're ready for the next stage but looking at the bottom there I'm not very happy with the way the leg is obvious so I've just got a little bit more beige wool and I'm just going to put it across the join can you see and I'm just felting that over the top of the join it just hides the, the line that you could see from the leg where the leg ended and the body started it just melts it in a bit more and makes it more cohesive that's a long word but <laughs> it's just uh, finishes it off nicely so then I, I decided to put a bit more on the other leg as well the other leg wasn't as bad for some reason but um, you could just see it make out a join so I've just wrapped some beige felt round and uh, just felted it across the join and it blends it in there you go skipped ahead a bit so now we're going to make the arms so to try and guess how long you want them just just hold the felt down the body got two pieces the same size and I'm going to fold the end over to make the hand just to make it a bit more bulky at the end of the hand so I'm just going to do that first and make it into sort of a ball shape really at the end of the arm um, I'm not making it into a hoof so much but just more of a, a round ball slightly thicker than the, be slightly thicker than the arm because I folded it over so I'm whizzing it on now so now I'm starting to work down the arm rotating it round keep rotating round and working on the working your way down the arm towards the armpit and making like a long sausage shape basically um, as you can see I've speeded it up but this took a while and then check check how long it is and see if it's long enough you want it to reach down to nearly touching the floor so I've just decided to make it a little bit longer and I've left plenty of felt at the end to attach it with and make sure I can make it as long as I want right so I seem happy with that so I've just repeated the process so that I've got two now I'm going to take some more dark brown felt and the same two amounts the same and as we did with the hoof I'm just going to wrap that round the hand so that it covers the very end of the hand part so I'm just wrapping it round and needling as I go making sure it's all covered 
the end bits covered and finishing it off all the way around. So I'm just finishing it off by needle felting into the end to make it a nice rounded end. And there you go. Skipped ahead a bit there. I did that for a while. Then made the second one in the same way, exactly the same way. So we've got two arms now. We're gonna now figure out whereabouts you want to position them and attach them in the same way as we did with the legs. So I'm just needle felting this soft unfelted part at the top of the arm into the shoulder, working my way around and make sure it's in the right position and then just make sure it's secure. Cut off any excess because we don't want to make it too bulky there and then just needle felt the ends into the shoulder and that should keep it well attached make it blend in as well without too harsh a line you see it's splayed out into an area so it wasn't one big clump so it, it makes it nice and uh, neat just having a play with the tail there just <laughs> neatening it up a bit there we go that's one arm i'll just attach the other one this side exactly the same way make sure you've got it in the right place and cut off the excess and needle felt to the top of the body Okay, so now we're on to attaching the head. Make sure it looks like it's going to line up okay. Uh, you may need to make more of that indent because you, you've just added a bit more maybe and you want to make it really sit into the shoulders. So once you're happy with the position, I'm stabbing in down through the head into the body. So you can see the angle I'm going downwards into the body for starters. So then it's loosely attached at the minute and then I'm going to try and make sure it's more attached by attaching some extra felt around. So I just got a small piece and I wrapped it around like a scarf and worked all the way around stabbing upwards into the head and downwards into the body. So it's sort of a, making sure this head's properly attached but also hiding the join. So I've worked all the way around with that wool. You can add more if you feel it needs it. But just keep working, stabbing down into the body and up into the head. And there you go. He's pretty much finished. Now you can leave him like this if you want. He's quite happy like that. But I decided to make a scarf out of the four ply essentials cotton that I used on my previous project. Using a two millimeter crochet hook. And I'm gonna start with a slip knot. I'm just going to make three chains, so one, two, three. Then I'm going to single, uh, double crochet rather into the second of those trains. So there's one double crochet, and then into the first chain, and do another double crochet. Then I'm going to chain one and turn the work. It's a massive scarf this, it takes ages. <laughs> chain, double crochet rather into the first chain and then double crochet into the next stitch rather. And then one chain again and turn. So you work your way along into each stitch, double crocheting into each, into the two stitches one chain and then turn speeded it up now you can see i'm just working my way along now how long you want to do this depends on your, what you've created so i've i've made quite a long scarf there but you might want to try it around your reindeer to check its length you might want a nice short scarf or you might want a longer one i'm just doing a couple more rows here and then I'm nearly done. Yeah, then just cut the end and finish off by um, sewing in your ends. It's just, uh, that's it, finish off the last bit. Get your needle, sew it into the, sew the ends into the scarf so that they're hidden. realised there's no point doing that because I've left the end too short <laughs> so I left it on 
threaded while I got the needle in, then thread it and just finish it off, sew it in a couple of more times and you should be done. And you're left with a nice little red scarf that looks like it's been knitted. It's actually been crocheted. So, uh, just wrapped it round, took it over. I've not attached it in any other way other than you would normally attach a scarf, in other words with a knot. Hope you enjoyed making the reindeer and if you have any ideas of how I can improve these videos please leave a comment below and if you liked it please like and subscribe I'll be making some more hopefully in the future. Thanks for watching, bye!